Hello everyone, welcome to today's webinar. My name is Melissa Abache. I work at Koch University International Admissions Team and I will be uh, the moderator for today's webinar, which is with our Graduate School of Sciences and Engineering. We're going to be talking about admission to all of our master and PhD programs. Thank you everyone who is joining us uh, right now. We're going to wait a couple of seconds uh, so that everyone can have an opportunity to join in. Um, first, we want to go over some basic ground rules to make sure that everybody's on the same page and has a satisfactory experience for today. So what we're going to do is that we're going to give you an overview of our university, especially for those of you who are uh, perhaps hearing about Koch University for the first time if you're joining us from outside of Turkey and I know there's many of you who are joining us today from um, abroad and thank you so much. Then we will give an overview of the Graduate School of Sciences and Engineering and this is going to be done um, with our Graduate School Director and me in which we will talk about master and PhD programs offered, the students and alumni in terms of their achievements and their profile, faculty members, research facilities and support that it's offered for graduate students. Um, then we will go into more detail about our scholarships, the admissions process. We will give some updates in light of test cancellations um, because of coronavirus and the pandemic that we're all experiencing. We will talk briefly about the support and opportunities available for international applicants. Summer opportunities, especially for those of you who are still in your undergraduate programs and have some time before you graduate. And then we will take your question, questions and ans and we will answer those questions. So today's webinar is being recorded and will be posted on our YouTube channel. If you search for Coach University International Admissions, you will find all of our webinar video recordings there so that you can watch it. Depending on the length of the webinar, we may cut parts of the recording, um, especially the Q&A section, but you will find, again, all the information on our website, the Graduate School of Sciences and Engineering website, or our International Admissions website, and we will put the details at the end of the presentation. You will be able to ask questions using the Q&A box that you will find on your screens, or also the chat box. So we kindly ask you to wait until the end of the presentation to write your questions and then we will read them and answer as many as possible. Okay, so to give you uh, an overview of Koch University, Koch University is a young research intensive small university located in Istanbul in Turkey. We say young because we were established 26 years ago and small because we have around 7,000 students and around 500 faculty members. Within the context of Turkey, that it's considered small and young as there are much larger universities with um, higher number of you know, universities, three, four times the number of students that we have as well as faculty members. However, what makes us unique is that with that size and in that short period of time, we have been able to you know, start to accomplish that mission that you see at the top, which is to become a center of excellence, not only in Turkey, but also in the region that provides world-class education and creates new knowledge for the benefit of society, not only of, of Turkish society, let's say, and its needs, but also on a global scale. On this slide, you see some kind of stats and facts and figures, which I know might be interesting from some, some of you, um, but what I want to highlight here is um, our research and as you're considering a master's or a PhD program to do if you're here in Turkey or if you're listening to us from abroad, it is very important to know the research profile and strengths and kind of unique features of a university um, when you're considering your different options. So, so as you can see there, we have four graduate schools and we will look at specifically today the Graduate School of Sciences and Engineering. Um, and we will talk in more detail about our research capacities in the next few slides. Another very special thing about us as a university is our campus. It's the thing that when people visit us for the first time, you know, they're, they cannot believe what they're seeing because it is a very beautiful campus in terms of its location, which is very green. Um, the architecture of the, of the campus, of the buildings and the facilities that are available there. But rather than me telling you, you know, a lot of details about this, 
what I would invite you is to check our YouTube channel where you will find an aerial tour that was um, done recently, like the end of last year. And you will find a lot of other videos done by students in which they show different facilities, how they're using those facilities, including dormitories. You can see more there. Here are just some pictures to give you an idea of the scale. We're showing here our uh, part of our undergraduate dormitories, and you can see part of the health center there. In the summer, it's also a very nice experience. Of course, this summer, we will wait to see what happens. Um, we are missing a lot being on our beautiful campus because of, you know, restrictions at national level, as I'm sure many of you are in the same situation. And here we can see, for example, part of the central library, our main auditorium, some of our courtyards where there's always some activity happening, happening every week. Now, going back to research, like what one of the biggest topics for today's webinar. As we said, our mission when it comes to research is to contribute on a global scale in a cross-disciplinary way or approach. And all of this is led by our world-class faculty. So the university spends a lot of resources to find the best of the best in each discipline, giving equal weight to all different colleges and um, majors, let's say, and programs to bring these talented people to our university to teach and to do a lot of research. So because of that, we are now the top recipient of national research awards. When you look at, for example, TUBITAC, which is the Turkish National Foundation, Science Foundation equivalent, um, we are also the highest recipient of ERC grants in Turkey, the European Research Council grants, which are extremely competitive because these are given to individual uh, principal investigators. And you know, it, within a specific field, such as let's say mechanical engineering, they are competing with also other researchers in uh, very large higher education systems with a lot more investment in research, such as the UK, Germany, um, France. So this is quite an achievement for both for Turkey and for us, as I said, as a small university. Um, we also have very strong relations with industry, and this is why reflected in terms of the overall number and the funding amount that we receive every year from external sources, whether that's from uh, national government funding for research or a lot of um, applied research and development uh, projects that our individual faculty have with industries in different uh, or companies in different industries. Um, in terms of the academic publishing that we do, we can also see that we're now the highest ranking university in Turkey in terms of the number of papers published per faculty and the impact that those papers have on their uh, respective fields. I was mentioning before ERC projects. Here you can see uh, just a bit more detail about the, the current grants that are held at Koch University. They're not only in sciences and engineering, they also include some in the social sciences field. And another kind of framework or flagship uh, program on a global level is the European Commission's Horizon 2020 um, funding for universities and uh, researchers. In that regard, uh, Koch University was the most successful university in Turkey among 55 that were active in this program. Now we're starting the next phase of that research framework program. So a lot of our graduate students are actually funded through the projects that are um, awarded through that program. I was mentioning impact. These are the specific kind of cluster areas or topics in which our faculty members' publications have an impact uh, ranking, which is considered at world-class levels and give us a, a distinct advantage in those areas. The ones that are highlighted in red are the ones that are more related to the Graduate School of Sciences and Engineering, and that's why we want them to, to show them here. In terms of infrastructure, our total laboratory area is now over 16,000 square meters, and that was greatly enhanced by the completion of our science and technology building at the end of uh, 2018. So we are now still in the process of moving a lot of um, laboratories and assigning laboratory space in that building. But what it means is that we now have some flagship uh, infrastructure and centers at Koch University that you don't find elsewhere in Turkey. One of them, just to give you an example, is the Koch University Translational Medicine Research Center, or KUTAM, 
which is um, a very interdisciplinary and cross-disciplinary uh, group of faculty members and graduate students, both at PhD, master, and even postdoc researchers, who are working on the, the laboratories that you see on the right-hand side in terms of molecular medicine, cellular and molecular imaging. Um, we have an animal research facility, biomechanics, nanoscale prototype laboratory. The idea, again, is that this, this has actually been the research center that has received the highest amount of funding from the Turkish government to date because again they trust the quality of the investigators that are or the researchers that are in the center another quick example uh, which is now hosted or or you know takes space in our new science and technology building is our manufacturing and automation research center or mark you can also find their uh, website so Again, these are the areas that they're working on, such as advanced production technologies, medical system and alternative organs, mechatronics, automation, robotics. And they do have a lot of graduate students who are, for example, enrolled in our mechanical engineering uh, PhD and master program in our biomedical sciences and engineering master and PhD programs. And they have a lot of collaborations with different companies, both in Turkey and outside of Turkey, as well as with universities, outside of Turkey and with the National Science Foundation to, again, develop uh, manufacturing and automation technologies. They have also made quite a lot of investment in terms of the equipment that it's available at the center or have even developed their own equipment in a much more affordable way, which represents a lot of innovation. And, um, it's one of the centers that we're very proud of because they have been the first in Turkey to develop specific technologies such as the ones that you can see on this um, slide. Uh, also a big exciting uh, kind of development for us as a university was the opening of our central research laboratory which is close to 300 square meters which allows our researchers from different disciplines to do atomic and molecular level imaging. And you can see the type of research areas that they're um, uh, working on because of the equipment that it's now available in that laboratory, which you can see on the left hand side of the slide. Here are just some images of the lab without any people as we were kind of setting all the equipment up. And we also now have a second clean, clean room uh, of, of yeah, 760 square meters which is designed to operate 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. And it's allowing the, the development of work in the research areas that you see on the screen, a lot of biomedical applications, semiconductor devices, sensor development, um, you know, and work in terms of uh, photonics and optoelectronics. Here we can just see uh, the different areas and the type of industries that our researchers are working to, to develop solutions for in terms of space and aviation. So I'm very happy now to introduce Professor Osgur Barishakan, who is the director of our Graduate School of Sciences and Engineering and the Dean of our College of Engineering. He's also the director of uh, one of our biggest laboratories here. So I'm going to let him talk a bit more uh, about himself to introduce himself, but we are very, very grateful for him being here today because he is a very busy person and we're all looking forward to hearing him and then he will answer some of your questions at the end. Okay, thank you very much, Melissa, for uh, excellent introduction of our university, all the uh, facilities and accomplishments so far. And I'm happy to have you all guys here. Uh, thank you very much for joining us in this uh, webinar on our Graduate School of Sciences and Engineering. Uh, my name is Özgür Barış Akan. I'm a professor of electrical engineering and I got my BS and MS and PhD all in electrical engineering. I got my PhD at Georgia Tech, uh, USA. Uh, I'm the Dean of College of Engineering and Director of the Graduate School of Science and Engineering. Um, my research areas are basically in telecommunications. Um, I work on the internet of everything, a nanoscale communications, a wireless communications and space communications. So I'll take you through the um, uh, programs in our institute, Graduate School of Science and Engineering, 
and uh, admission uh, conditions and what we offer to our students and what our alumni uh, does after graduation. And I'll try to answer your questions uh, at the end of the uh, webinar. Uh, so overall, we have around 30, uh, exactly 32 graduate programs in GSSC. Uh, they are master's programs and PhD programs and master's programs are thesis and non-thesis uh, uh, options available. So for our classical uh, mainstream engineering and sciences, we have all both master's and PhD programs like electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, industrial, computer and chemical and biological engineering. And in addition to these master's and PhD programs, we have uh, interdisciplinary programs as well, like biomedical science and engineering, uh, uh, computational science and engineering. On top of these, we have uh, launched a new uh, set of uh, master programs, uh, which are non-thesis master's programs on cybersecurity and data sciences and which will be offered by uh, fall 2020. So I'll e elaborate all these um, new um, programs in my talk. So if we look into the um, program requirements, uh, uh, regardless of the field that you will be doing, uh, the set of the requirements in terms of coursework and exam and a thesis are the same. So if I go over them briefly, uh, PhD is in general four years if you come with your master's degree and it is five years if you come directly out of your bachelor's degree. So four years correspond to minimum of uh, seven courses, uh, which is uh, basically 21 credits. Again, if you come with master's, uh, but if you come with bachelor's degree only, it is a minimum of 14 courses uh, requirement. Uh, so these are the main requirements uh, requirements imposed by the Higher Education Council. And then uh, you have to take your uh, PhD qualifying exam, uh, which again, depending on the area of your, of your uh, PhD study, the type of the exam, uh, the questions, number of questions, the duration of the exam may change, but uh, in all the fields, it is composed of written and oral exam. So it is uh, basically uh, performed to uh, measure your breadth and depth uh, of your knowledge in that uh, corresponding uh, field of study. Uh, once you are uh, successful at the qualifying exam, then you're uh, expected to prepare your you know, PhD proposal, your idea where you will be contributing, and then along your uh, you know, uh, study, you will work on that field, on that set of problems, and at the end, you're expected to write down and defend your PhD thesis. Well, it sounds like it's a sequential process, but um, again, it depends on the advisor and the field, but the way I do it, I, I get my students and I ask them to not to you know, get stuck in the courses, just take it easy on taking coursework and start research right away at the first uh, even weeks of their PhD study. And then uh, they take the uh, research and courses in parallel so that they will have more time to have more novel ideas uh, which, uh, in which they will contribute and take us to uh, uh, fields which are unknown uh, before they start doing the PhD. So they will be the doctor of that field. So. Uh, four years should be spent on that on that research, not only on coursework and taking exams. So in, in master's, it is two years. Uh, courses are uh, seven. The requirements of the courses is just minimum, minimum of seven courses, 21 credits. And then on top of uh, coursework, you're supposed to do your research thesis um, with your advisors. Um, it, it says other required non-credit courses, but they basically correspond to, you know, um, seminar courses like pass fail you have to attend certain number of seminars etc and in the non-thesis uh, you have to take minimum of 10 courses uh, and then you are supposed to do a graduation project you can ask what is the difference between graduation project and research thesis a research thesis is exactly the same one with the phd maybe it's not that comprehensive in terms of the contribution or the novelty but the graduation project might be an application of an idea it might be some practical demonstration etc it doesn't have to be really research involved and it doesn't have to be novel in terms of contribution to the field uh, like in the masters with thesis 
So all the programs in GSAC are offered in English uh, without any exception. Uh, programs are full-time. Uh, they are on campus. Uh, with some exceptions here mean that, uh, especially for like new programs like data science and cybersecurity, we will be providing all the courses available online in case you may have difficulty in attending some of the lectures uh, on, on campus, and you will be able to compensate for that by accessing that course material remotely in an online manner. So we apply a very competitive uh, selection and admission process. Uh, we look into you know, all your credentials, of course the transcripts and exam scores like GRE, TOEFL, this and that. For Turkish students, it's uh, you know, ALES exam. Uh, and then we also apply a holistic admission process. At the end of this talk, I'll talk about you know, uh, the uh, relaxation of the GRE and TOEFL requirements in terms of timing of them. Of course, we, we, we will not be able to waive all these uh, totally, but we know that there is a difficulty right now because of this pandemic uh, uh, situation. So uh, even if you don't have GRE and TOEFL scores at the time of your application, we will look into your other credentials and we might be able to uh, provide you conditional acceptance. So holistic admission process means that we, we look into all your credentials, not only just some numbers, uh, which are the scores of certain exams. So in that sense, especially if you have any uh, prior research experience in your undergraduate study in some of the course projects, etc., please make sure that you highlight them in your statements of purposes or in the, in the, in the, in the uh, you know, channels that you communicate with your prospective uh, advisors. So I'll take you towards uh, uh, uh, elaboration of the new programs for fall 2020. Um, so the first one is Master of Science in Cybersecurity. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's extremely important to secure the cyber presence. Uh, all the data generated and all the data uh, being consumed must be secured. So we have launched a new cybersecurity master's program. This is going to be non-thesis, so it will help you to be equipped with all the, uh, you know, uh, skills and, and tools uh, that you might be using if you take on a job on cybersecurity. There's going to be a new uh, uh, information uh, session webinar right on the cybersecurity and data science next week on 13th May. Please join that. So this uh, uh, as program will have tons of new courses and uh, you will be able to, you know, uh, at the end of the uh, getting this degree, you will be able to work at uh, various industries like banks and software companies and, and medical device producers, et cetera. So there, there's not gonna be a specific deadline, uh, uh, but we will evaluate all the applications on the rolling basis until the beginning of the next semester. So I think I can stop here, right? Okay, so now we're going to talk about our uh, master's non-thesis in data science, which is also one of the new programs that we're offering from this fall 2020 admission period onwards. So for most of you, especially if you uh, have been studying engineering in your undergraduate degree, there's no need to talk too much about the, the amount of uh, data that it's now generated across different industries for all types of purposes. And of course, the unprecedented challenges that we have as society, both in Turkey and worldwide, regarding, you know, climate change, uh, pandemic diseases, such as the ones that we have right now, um, you know, the internet of everything that, that it's now uh, becoming more and more mainstream. So the, the masters in the the science, it aims to develop the skills that will be needed to make sense of all the data and tackle these challenges that awaits you in your professional life, regardless of the industry that you are currently working in or that you want to work in in the future. So what does the program provide to students? Well, you will gain theoretical foundations in the topics of data processing, data analysis, machine learning, visualization in an interdisciplinary curriculum, which is taught by our professors in computer engineering, other engineering fields, but also in, in from our faculty of business, from our faculty of law, so that you have quite a kind of well-rounded approach to data science and data analytics. We will have a specific webinar 
about this program next week on the 13th of May between 3 and 4 p.m. Istanbul. So I kindly invite you to register to attend that webinar if you're particularly interested in these topics. The other things that you will gain, of course, are computational skills such as Python, R, Julia and others. Um, and you gain practical experience by applying that theoretical knowledge in different domains. So the idea is that you get exposed to cutting edge research being done by our faculty members who will be the professors in the courses that you will take, but also develop industry projects that are of relevance to you. The evaluation of applications will, I mean, it has started, the applications are open now if you wish to submit your application and will be uh, continuing until early September this year. We also have some exciting news for everyone who is interested in the topics of artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, deep learning, which is that uh, Coach University founded the, um, Ish, the Coach University Ish Bankas Artificial Intelligence Research Center and Laboratory in February 2020, thanks to a generous donation from uh, Turkey Ish Bankas. It's one of the largest banks in Turkey. You can see the website there and we will also be holding a very special webinar next week on the 14th of May between 1 and 3 p.m. with the faculty members who are part of that laboratory and we will be talking about the we will be talking about the center itself in terms of the research projects that they are currently doing and will be doing in the future and also the master and PhD fellowships that they're offering for students who are accepted into our master of computer science and engineering programs or the PhD in computer science and engineering programs and other related graduate programs. Here you can see very briefly some of the research areas and all of this will be covered in much more detail during the webinar next week. So now we want to talk about our graduate students because that's one of the things that we're very proud of. Um, when we look at the current number of students, we are approaching around 500, a bit over 500 students at the PhD level, um, master with thesis and master non-thesis. Those students that are in the research tracks in the master with thesis and PhD programs are supervised by 121 faculty advisors. So what's important here is that, you know, it's around four students per faculty member. You cannot find that in many universities anymore, that level of very one-to-one -one dedicated supervision that you will have here as a graduate student. And of course, um, when we look at our international students at the Graduate School of Sciences and Engineering, it's actually the Graduate School that has the highest number of international students and they're coming from some of the countries that you see there. We do have a lot of students, for example, from Iran, from Pakistan, and now increasingly also from India, from China, Syria, and other countries close to Turkey and also very far away from Turkey. So we are very much looking forward to receiving applications from uh, from you if you're joining us from outside of Turkey so that we can again continue to build on the the excellent value that those students add to our student body in terms of their experience their background um, and the networks that, that they will build for us as a university in the future another thing here to mention is that we do have very high expectations in terms of the research potential of the master and the PhD students uh, and this is reflected in the number of publications per student that we see for our master and PhD students. So besides looking at the graphs, which is not, not that relevant, but when you see that table, uh, you can see, for example, for PhD students, they have an average of nearly five publications by the end of their program that they publish um, with their advisors or on their own in the relevant areas. Of course, um, because that emphasis is put on publishing in very top quality scientific journals um, and uh, you know in the top field in the top journals in their field we have these are just some examples uh, for example Do dr murat kushu he obtained his phd in electrical and electronics engineering and he got the ieee turkey phd thesis award in 2018 the same with dr hamide ramezani who obtained the same award in 2019 these are examples of uh, students who have actually been supervised by Professor Uzur Barish Khan, who is here with us and he kindly gave us these examples because he has known these students for a long time, worked with them together very closely. So 
uh, we know it takes a lot to be awarded this type of uh, prizes or recognition. So it, it's a testament to the, the very challenging environment in that you're in, but the rewards that you get at the end of it as well. Here are other examples, for example, uh, from mechanical engineering, our graduate Yasemin Vardar, who uh, received a PhD thesis award from the Eurohaptic Society in uh, 2019. Uh, same thing in material science, for example, best poster award at the 21st National Optics, Electro Optics and Photonics Workshop. Uh, Tuba Khan, also in electrical and electronics engineering at the IEEE Infocom uh, conference. So, you know, here we have, for example, another student from Pakistan, Walid from computer science and engineering. He's a master's student. Um, uh, Sehan in computer science and engineering as well, biomedical science. So the list is always being renewed. These are just some recent examples and we, we have a lot more that um, you can see on the Graduate School of Sciences and Engineering website. Uh, similarly, for example, we're excited. This is very, very recent news. One of our chemical and biological engineering alumni, uh, Gözde Demirer, she has now taken a position as an assistant professor at, at Caltech and we're very proud of her. Um, some of our uh, undergrad and even graduate robotics teams, they are now winning also national competitions. And this is just a very small sample. The idea is that you're going to be surrounded by excellent professors, but also excellent students in the classroom, in the courses that you will take and as your lab or of research group partners. In terms of alumni, the Graduate School of Sciences and Engineering has now awarded um, 1,110 degrees. This is across, again, PhD, Master with Thesis, and uh, Master Non-Thesis programs. And what we are proud of besides you know, awarding the degree is where those alumni go to after Koch University. And the list, again, this is a non-comprehensive list. There's a lot more places here. What we want to highlight is that they're able to find very easily um, PhD or postdoc or lecturer positions at some of the best universities around the world, especially when it comes to um, the United States, Europe, in industry, both in Turkey and outside of Turkey. And in Turkey, for example, they are, uh, we have now several alumni who are working as researchers or in teaching positions at universities that you see on this slide. And again, you know, these are, again, Professor Azgur, he was very proud of, our, of his students. Uh, so this is what they did after graduation. So um, the, the, for example, Murat is now one of our assistant professors in electrical and electronics engineering. And uh, Hamide, Dr. Hamide, she's now a researcher in, at the University of Cambridge in the UK. Uh, here are other examples. Imran, uh, he's quite special because he completed his master's in optoelectronics and photonics here at Koch University and now he's part of the team that has been contributing to the detection of gravitational waves, which was a big kind of part of the scientific world uh, community news in 2018 and he continues to work in this uh, Italian uh, National Institute for Nuclear Physics and we wish him the best because he's one of our uh, best alumni from, from Pakistan. And then not only academic environments, but also um, industry positions. So for example, uh, you see on this slide, Ejehan completed his PhD in electricals and electronic engineering in 2018. And now he works at Boston Consulting Group uh, here in, in Turkey. So when we also, I, I've mentioned students and alumni, of course, these are all supported by an excellent group of faculty members across the different departments and programs of the Graduate School of Sciences and Engineering. What you see here is just a very small sample um, of our professors across different disciplines like physics, mathematics, um, mechanical engineering, and you can see that they're coming from the top ranked engineering programs in the US. We have a lot of professors who completed their PhDs in the, in the United States and they were heading laboratories or research groups there and then they were um, attracted to come and continue doing that work with the facilities and support that Koch University offers. This starts, you know, from even from our current uh, president, Professor Umran Inan. He was, uh, uh, he is a professor emeritus uh, at Stanford University where he served for for over 30 years, I think it was 36 years. 
um, and he's still teaching some undergraduate courses today. But this is the type of supervision that you will have as a graduate student here. Of course, those faculty members are then heading specific laboratories or research groups. There's a long list. The next two slides are gonna show you that. And again, you can find all of this information on the Graduate School of Sciences and Engineering website. The idea is that you can have a look and see, um, you know, who is working on the topics that you are interested in according to your, to your major. The list goes on. There's over 42 labs or centers which are affiliated with the Graduate School of Sciences and Engineering. Okay. And as I said, yeah, we, we said at the beginning, we are now the top recipients in Turkey of uh, faculty awards. Uh, this is just a sample of recent ones from 2019 and early 2020 from professors in uh, engineering, but also in sciences. So this includes very prestigious uh, awards such as in IEEE Communication Society, Young Research Awards um, from um, the Mustafa Parlar Foundation Research Encouragement Award, the Tuba Gebip, which translates roughly as, as Young Researchers Awards from the Turkish Academy of Science. Um, here we continue to see more awards. Also, Professor Udura Barishakan was uh, the recently recipient of the AXA Chair in Internet of Everything, which is the first time such a chair has been actually received in, in Turkey. And our president, again, you know, he received in late 2019 the Mustafa Prize, which is a top honor in the study of science and technology um, to prominent researchers in the Muslim world. So, so those of you who are joining us who are from Iran, you might be very familiar with this um, prize and the prize recipients in previous years. So this is quite an accomplishment, uh, especially for faculty or researchers in our, in our parts of the world. Here we see uh, Professor Elif Nur Ferat Karalar, who received the Ambo Young Investigator Award. This is a very prestigious grant and an award that uh, it was the first time they had a recipient from Turkey. And, you know, it was to one of our faculty members. Also, Marie Curie Individual Fellowships. Um, uh, you know, we have conti we're continuing to apply for more European Research Council grant. Uh, in the future, we have a very ambitious target between now and 2023, and we, we're very confident that we will achieve that during that time. So not all, only we have excellent faculty members who are the, the direct supervisors of our graduate students, but we regularly also invite faculty members from other universities from Turkey and outside of Turkey to share their expertise and the current work that they're doing and receive feedback and comment on their work. Uh, through the Distinguished Seminar Series. So this is just an example of the most recent ones that were held in December, January, February. Um, we would have continued, of course, but we had to, you know, because of what's happening worldwide, we've had to stop them, but they are going to be resumed shortly through online delivery format. But again, this means that our graduate students are exposed regularly to different ideas outside of you know, the, our own community. And it helps to also expand their network of professional contacts for conferences, for publications and other opportunities. So now um, we're gonna talk about more like the, the, the bits and pieces of how you get accepted to our programs and what are the type of scholarships that we offer for our PhD and our master with thesis programs. So the first thing to emphasize, and we want to be very clear about this, is that all admitted students to all PhD and master with thesis programs are automatically offered 100% tuition fee exemption or waiver. So there's no tuition fees to pay for our PhD or master with thesis programs. And this applies both to Turkish and to international admitted students. So in order to receive a scholarship, the first step is to complete an application, submit it, and then wait to see if you have been shortlisted, do very well in the interview, and then if you're offered admission, you receive this 100% scholarship. I will talk about this in more detail in the next few slides. So besides the tuition fee exemption, then we also offer monthly living expenses stipends to cover those expenses. So uh, from September this year onwards for the Graduate School of Sciences and Engineering, 
uh, PhD students would receive 3,000 Turkish lira per month before they take their uh, PhD qualifying exam. After they have successfully passed that qualifying exam, then the amount is increased to 3,500 Turkish lira per month. For master with thesis students, the uh, monthly stipend is 1,500 Turkish lira. This is if you receive the Koch University Scholarship, which means that it's coming from the central university budget. However, some students may be funded through specific projects that are um, that each individual faculty member has as part of their group or laboratory. In that case, the monthly stipend will vary, okay? So, and it's usually then higher than 1,500 tele per month for masters or 3,000, 3,500 for the PhD students. The sources of this funding, as you can see, it can come from TUVITAG, which is the Turkish National Science Foundation or EU projects or industry projects. If you are offered admission, your offer letter will be very specific in saying what is the amount of stipend that you will be receiving as a master with thesis or PhD student and what is the source of that funding. So you're being funded through which, which channel, let's say. For Turkish applicants, there's also the TÜBİTAK BDEB graduate scholarships and all admitted uh, students are encouraged to apply and then follow the process to start receiving that additional support. And then we also have um, specific stipends, which are, for example, 4,500 um, for uh, TÜBİTAK or National Turkish Science Foundation Industrial PhD program, which means that you work also with a specific industry partner as part of your research. We do have some students who may be admitted to the master with thesis or the PhD program with only tuition waiver scholarships, meaning that you do not pay any tuition fees, but you do not receive any uh, stipend or other side benefits. So you may also see that your offer letter reflects it, and then you will, you will need to find other uh, sources of income to cover your living expenses, accommodation, and others. So um, the non-thesis programs, for example, are masters in cybersecurity and data science, they do Pay, like the admitted students do pay an annual tuition. We do have uh, some limited partial scholarships based on academic merit for those programs. And if you're a Koch University alumni, you graduated from one of our undergraduate programs or even a master program, you may receive um, a 25% discount if you're interested in one of our non-thesis programs. Besides then, as I said, the main kind of advantage of doing a, a PhD or master with this program is that you do not pay any tuition and you get a monthly stipend. Then there's additional side benefits which are provided for all the scholarship categories that we mentioned in the previous slide, which is housing aid that you received you know, directly to your bank account every month. The amount is now 750 Turkish lira per month or free furnished housing, which you share, share with three or four other graduate students in apartments that we rent from private landlords near campus. Near campus means about eight minutes by, by shuttle or minibus or car. You also receive private health insurance uh, with limited coverage. You receive travel support to attend scientific events and we will see the specifics of that in the next slide. Uh, PhD students in particular also receive a meal card. It's like a, a top-up card that you can use on campus and off campus. And if you own a vehicle or will be using a vehicle, then you also get um, uh, kind of parking pass to reduce or yeah, reduce your parking fees. When we look at travel awards, this is for um, master and PhD students so that you can attend uh, specific conferences where you will be presenting your work where for example if you have a paper or a poster that has been accepted to one of the best conferences in your specific field then the graduate school of sciences and engineering has funding to support your travel costs meaning uh, flights hotels for that the amounts have been increased uh, for 2020 and onwards so for example if you want to attend um, in a conference in the US, that's, that's you know, of course, one of the countries where we will find most of the biggest scientific events that we cover um, up to 8,000 Turkish lira per year. And around 110 students 
are support, supported every year through this uh, work. It's not, it's not guaranteed. It's on a competitive basis and on the basis of the recommendation of your supervisor and the type of conference or event that you want to um, apply or attend. Then we also have teaching awards. We have academic excellence uh, awards, which are presented at our commencement ceremony. No, so now we talked we talked now about the kind of financial benefits and financial aid that we provide to our graduate students. There's also non-financial aid and support that we provide that you can see on these slides. So we talked about the laboratories and research centers. We have a high performance computer cluster and cloud support for all of our students. Um, we provide teaching training and support from our coach office of learning and teaching or because all of you who are admitted to 10 hours per week that you have to perform teaching assistant duties uh, for one of the for your academic supervisor so this office of learning and teaching they hold workshops every year at the beginning of the semester in terms of how to deliver let's say lab sessions uh, like micro teaching uh, sessions so that you can improve your teaching practice we also offer a central library which is open 24 hours 365 days a year with lots of study rooms and access to all the online you know databases journals articles that you need and they do a lot of training as well so to help you become a better researcher in terms of the use of different tools creating your orchid like your um, research identification number and lots of other services that you can see on their website and then we do provide a lot of uh, support in terms of English. So we have a graduate English language program. If your current proficiency level is not that high, it's just, let's say, above the minimum and you need to improve your English level, then we can offer that in specific cases. The same thing with writing, specifically academic writing. We have a writing center at Coach University, which was established two years ago, and it's heavily used by all of our graduate students. So they provide one-on-one -on -one, um, writing advice services. So you bring, for example, a draft of the article that you are preparing for a journal, and they can have a look and then provide feedback and advice in terms of structure, format, grammar, etc. Um, and we also offer an academic writing course for all graduate students. If you are then, for example, interested in applying for specific grants or even um, applying for patenting a technology that you have helped develop, then we have research support services through the technology and transfer office that can guide you in that whole process. Or if you want to, during your studies or after you graduate, to start your own company to provide specific uh, technologies or services for an industry. We have the Coach University uh, Incubation Center, which is located in the center of, you know, in a central part of Istanbul. And they have a lot of, you know, uh, trainings, competitions, like they put you in touch with uh, funders or investors. So that is also a service available. Um, for international students, we do offer a lot of practical support because we know it's hard to move from, a, you know, from your country to a completely new place where you may not speak the language or not be familiar with cultural uh, customs and ways of doing things. So we have an international community office, the acronym is ICO that you see there. And what they do is that before you arrive in the fall semester, in their spring semester, they get in touch with you to provide information in terms of what to prepare before you arrive, how to apply for a visa, if you do need a visa, not all, not all countries require a visa to enter Turkey, um, how to apply for your student residence permit and then renewing that permit every year, finding accommodation if you decide to stay off campus, uh, opening a bank account, all of these practical things. But also then during your studies, you will always be invited to participate in nice activities that you know have to do with national holidays or to uh, join trips to discover Istanbul, discover the beautiful parts of uh, Turkey as a country. So these are very nice kind of things that again, you don't find in every university in Turkey. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the application admissions process. We know you have a lot of questions about this and we hope we will be answering most of those questions. So the first thing, what are the requirements to apply for our master and PhD programs. Here we're talking about our master with thesis and our PhD programs especially. So the first thing is your CV. 
in which you can talk about your, you know, your educational background, professional, if you have any work experience, and especially any research experience that you have, this is the place to feature that in terms of publication, posters, anything you have done at your undergraduate or master's level, then you have to reflect that on that CV. Then we have the statement of purpose, which is a motivation letter in which you're explaining why you want to do the master's at say in computer science and engineering, why you want to do that specifically at Koch University, what is the experience, skills, courses that you have done that make you a good candidate for the program, and what are the topics, research topics that you're interested in and who do you want to work with as a supervisor at Koch University. The statement of purpose is not a research proposal. Um, it's, it's, our process is not like European universities where you need to have a previous sort of approval from a supervisor to apply. You are welcome to contact our faculty members in the Red School of Sciences and Engineering if you want to receive informal feedback from them in terms of your fit with their specific group or laboratory based on the research uh, interest and the projects that they're working on and what you have done before and what your interests in. Not all faculty members might reply back to you immediately or at all. It also depends on how you contact them. And we have put a lot of guidance about this on our website, which I will show a bit later. So the statement of purpose is one of the most critical elements in our application process because it's where you essentially shine. And, and our faculty members who are going to be looking at your application, they will get a better idea of you as a candidate by reading that statement of purpose. So make sure that you take enough time and care when you're preparing that. Make sure that it doesn't mention the name of a different university, that there's no typos or grammatical errors. Make sure someone else reads your statement of purpose before you submit it. This is a very you know, easy thing to do, but a lot of people don't <laughs> take the advice and then they regret it. So please do take care when preparing this, this document. Then you should also include your official transcripts from all the universities that you have attended or where you have completed degrees, whether that's your bachelor's degree or your master's degree. Official here means that it, they have to be issued by the university. We know that some of you may have some barriers right now to obtain kind of uh, original transcripts in terms of like paper transcripts from your universities if they're also closed because of the coronavirus kind of restrictions. But if you have electronic versions that you can request from your registrar's office or the relevant unit at your university, that is okay to submit in your application. Then we ask for two uh, reference or recommendation letters for the master programs and three for the PhD programs. What that means is on the online application address, the, the institutional email address of uh, two or three referees, preferably academic, um, who can then, they will, they will receive an email from the university asking them to submit the recommendation letter or write it down in the form that we will provide. Again, because of the current situation, the recommendation letters do not have to be with a wet signature and on, on official university letterhead paper. If they want to submit a normal Word document with their recommendation for you, that is okay. The important thing is that you know that they need to be ideally, for example, professors who have supervised you in previous research work or who taught courses to you or that you work with. That's that's the value of that as as a document. Then we have one is to show your English proficiency and the exams that we are able to accept are the TOEFL internet-based test and for those of you who are in Turkey then the YDS, EYDS or YOKDIL um, tests the minimum scores are 80. For those of you who are taking or have taken the IELTS exam you can apply with that, okay? So you can include your IELTS test score report on the online application form, but please know that it's not currently accepted by the Higher Education Council of Turkey as a valid English proficiency exam. So you can apply with it, and if you're offered admission, then the Graduate School of Sciences and Engineering team, they will ask you to provide a TOEFL IBT or uh, yeah, a TOEFL IBT test score, 
Um, by the time you come and enroll as a new student in September or the, the start of the semester or during the first semester, you will need to sign a paper stating that you will bring that document, okay? It is required. It's not to do with un university policy. It's to do with national regulation for all master with thesis and PhD programs. The second test there is also required, um, which is to demonstrate your uh, your aptitude for graduate level coursework and research. So the, the tests are there, the GRE for international applicants or ALICE for the Turkish applicants. If you're a Turkish applicant, but you haven't taken the ALICE and you have taken the GRE, you can apply with your GRE because we know we get this question uh, quite frequently. We know that right now, it's not possible to take the GRE test um, in many countries, including Iran, including China. And ETS, the company that organizes the test, they have now started offering an at-home online version of the test. If you're able to take that test, uh, please do. Um, if not, that's okay. Uh, we will explain how we're handling the admissions for this year because of all the uh, you know, disruption that has happened worldwide. So, the way to apply is that all of these documents that you see on the slides, you create an application in our online application system. You can see the, the address there. It's apply.ku.edu.tr. And you should submit your application before the deadline, which this year is May 30th, 2020. If there are any changes in terms of extensions to the deadline, they will be announced on the Graduate School of Sciences and Engineering website in the section regarding admission. So make sure that you start checking that website regularly. If you have already started an application or if you're planning on starting an application soon, then just make sure that you're checking that website regularly in case there are any extensions to the application deadline. So the Graduate School of Sciences and Engineering has two application periods. So one is for those wishing to start in the fall semester. Fall for, for us means starting in September. The exact, exact dates are not uh, determined yet because we also depend on the Higher Education Council of Turkey to let us know. So that's the, that's the main period where we admit most students to the master and PhD programs. And then we also have spring admissions, spring meaning February. Um, in which, again, the, most programs still have some uh, spaces, let's say for uh, PhD and master students, and those are announced on the deadline. So after you submit your application, you will be contacted by the Grad School of Sciences and Engineering to let you know if you have been admitted or not around four to six weeks after the application deadline. If you are shortlisted for interview, they will get in touch with you earlier than that so make sure that you schedule an online interview with one of the program faculty members in mechanical engineering, chemical, computer engineering, whichever program you're um, applying to. For our masters without thesis in cybersecurity and data science, because these are new programs and we're very interested in, in creating a very nice first cohort for, the, for these, then we have a rolling evaluation of applications until early September 2020. So the, the 30th of May deadline does not apply uh, strictly, let's say, to these two programs. For everything else that we saw on, on the slides showing our programs, then make sure that you apply before the 30th of May. Okay, so now we have some updates regarding, as I was mentioning, the cancellation of the uh, TOEFL and GRE tests, which are required for our admissions. So you will be able, if you don't have them right now, and you're not able to register for them in your country, you can still apply without them, and you will be evaluated on the basis of all the other information and documents, such as your CV, transcripts, um, the, the statement of purpose, and the recommendation letters. So Again, just making sure that everything, your application is very well prepared, very, very well written, submitted on time, helps in terms of increasing your admission chances. What we don't have, and I should have mentioned in this in the previous slides, is we don't have minimum GPA scores for admission to specific programs. So if you want to know, let's say, if 
my GPA is 2.5 or if my GPA is 3 by admission. Like, that's a question that unfortunately we cannot answer because it, the admission decision does not depend on a single thing like GPA. But the professors in the program, they will look at everything on your file. So they will look at which university you graduated from, from which uh, bachelor or master's degree, what was your GPA, what courses you took, um, then how is that reflected on the statement of purpose, how your professors are recommending you, um, and if you have any type of uh, research experience, whether that's in a specific course, in a project, or working as an assistant in a lab or center, they will take all of this into consideration. So, because of the situation this year um, and coronavirus related test cancellations, then what will happen is some, some students may be, may be offered a conditional acceptance. And the condition is that by the fall 2020 semester starts, you should bring by then a valid GRE and TOEFL test score. Or if you're still not able to take those exams, let's say by the end of August, to then bring them during the first semester of classes. So between September and sort of end of December 2020. So the, the important thing here is that on the online application form, there is a section for English proficiency and there is a section called test scores. You have to mark there that you will take the GRE and the TOEFL test and indicate a date that you can register for that. If you don't know the date, or for example, if you go to the ETS website, you select your country and your city, and they're not showing any available dates, just mark a future date, for example, like middle or end of August, so that the system allows you to submit your application, okay? And as I said, if it's possible for you to register, to take the at-home online tests, so that you include them in your application and it sort of, you know, uh, you know, you have a complete application, then do. We know that there's also barriers in terms of internet access or the room requirements that you need to comply to, to take this at home test and not all of you will be able to meet those requirements. So again, if you're, if possible, you can register for this. So what happens after you submit your application? So the Graduate School of Sciences and Engineering asks the program professors to make a short list of candidates. This is going to happen this year around mid-June because the, again, the deadline is 30th of May. Then um, shortlisted candidates are going to be asked to have an interview with one of the faculty members that's going to happen between mid to late June or even early July because it depends on the availability also of the professors. For specific programs like um, our computer sciences and engineering, those of you who are interested in artificial intelligence specifically, there may be a written exam, but we will provide more details about that in the webinar that we're organizing on the 14th of May about the Coach University um, Artificial Intelligence Laboratory Fellowships. But you can also find the information on the website. After the interview, if you did very well, then around July, August, again, the, the times will vary across the programs, then you will receive a, an acceptance offer or a conditional offer or a rejection. If you're offered acceptance, as I said, the offer letter will be very detailed in that it will, ex it will specify that you have received, for example, a tuition waiver so that you don't pay any tuition fees. Um, if you're going to receive a stipend, what's the amount of the stipend and the source of that stipend, if it's from the Coach University Central Budget or from a specific project uh, or from, for example, uh, Turkish scholarships, which we will talk about shortly after. Um, and with that, you can apply for your student visa if you need to travel from outside of Turkey and you need a visa, for example, those candidates who are in, in Pakistan, that's an example that comes to mind, um, or, you know, you do your preparations to come here. Then registration as a new student or enrollment happens in September. As I said, we don't know the dates yet, but they will be announced via email to all the admitted candidates and on our website as well. So just to recap, um, in case you have these questions, the way to apply for admission to our master and PhD programs is through an online application form only. You cannot email documents, you cannot uh, send documents via regular posts for, to be evaluated and of course not in person. So everything has to be done online. There is no application fee 
And please, if you see anywhere, any announcement that people have to pay some type of fee to apply or to be guaranteed some type of scholarship for Coach University, please know that those are fake announcements, that's fake advertisement, and you should let us know because we are very vigilant about this type of offers from unscrupulous you know, companies um, in different countries. Um, please make sure that you ask your referees well in advance so that they have time to prepare the recommendation, the recommendation letters and that they submit them before the deadline or just after so that the evaluation is not held up by waiting for your recommenders to submit the letters. Okay. As we said, you know, we, we're just going to repeat this again. Just make sure you highlight all your relevant research experience and skills that you have gained in your undergraduate degree, including publications if you have them, and of course in your master's degree if you have done a master's degree, and take time to prepare a strong statement of purpose. It doesn't have to be very long. We don't have a predetermined format that you have to, to um, abide by in terms of the minimum number of words or characters or maximum. Um, what we see typically is, you know, from one to three pages, the more concise, the better, where you highlight what are your strengths as a candidate, your interest, uh, if you have a faculty member preference, because it shows that you have done proper um, research about which professors are you interested in working in and why. What, the thing that it's very clear to faculty members, what I, I have seen, is that it's immediately clear to them when people sort of copy and paste generic motivation letters that they have sent to two or three other programs and, and doesn't show specific interest in coach university. So that's what you need to avoid at all costs. Okay. For those of you joining us from outside of Turkey, thank you so much again for doing that. We know that the time zones are very different from some of you who are, have uh, joined us from India, from China, from the US. I mean, for, for those of you who are joining, I can see them from Europe, then I guess it's a bit easier, but thank you. Thank you for coming today. Um, we have a specific website, which is international.ku.edu.tr, in which we put a lot of detailed guidance on how to submit your application, how to contact the supervisor, how to prepare the statement of purpose samples, um, how to prepare for the GRE, we have videos, so, so make sure you check that website before you submit your application, okay? Also, we encourage all of you to apply for the Turkish scholarships, which is a Turkish government national scholarship program for all countries. So if any country that you're from for the master and for the PhD programs, the website is turkiyeborsole.gov.tr. And the main thing to remember here is that you should apply on their portal and also on our Coach University online application portal or, or system. You will see that the applications for this year have passed now, but that's okay. The important thing is that you um, apply, for example, for the PhD in industrial engineering in the Coach University online application system and that you create a user on their system so that if you are nominated by us as a, as a Turkish scholarships um, scholar, we will send your name to Turkish scholarships for approval, like official approval, and then they will get in touch with you to ask you to kind of activate your scholarship by bringing your documents like your passport, diploma, transcripts to the nearest Turkish consulate or embassy to have them certified. Once that process is complete, then it activates your scholarship. What that scholarship does is that, um, you know, besides the, the tuition waiver that we already talked about, then you receive a monthly stipend um, that it's a combination of the coach stipend and the, the Turkish scholarship stipend. You receive again, free accommodation, health insurance, but also it includes flight, which is something that we cannot offer ourselves as, as coach university. We have specific uh, country-based scholarships that we have established through agreements with either private foundations or government organizations in the countries that you see on the slide, such as China, Pakistan, Ghana, Kazakhstan. So for those of you joining us today from those countries, you can um, check that again on our website or you can also write to us uh, to, to get more details and we can send you information in that way. Finally, we're now getting towards the end to start taking your questions. 
uh, if you are in your second or even third year of your undergraduate degrees, uh, we have a summer research program for undergraduate students from every country, so Turkey and international, that happens every summer. And it's a research internship with our faculty members in all disciplines in which they, they have a specific project and they welcome undergrad students to contribute to that project by completing a task, you know, or a series of tasks during the summer. Uh, we provide free campus accommodation to all the admitted students and the program starts in between July and August. So the applications will open in February next year for next summer. So this is for those of you who are, you know, planning well ahead and still have a year or a couple of years to go before you graduate. This is an excellent way of getting to know our university, our faculty members, our students, the campus. And if you have never been in Istanbul, then it's a very nice opportunity to live in the city during the summer when it's at, its at its best. You can see the program website at the bottom of the slide and you can also email us for details. For those of you who are, for example, currently in your master's program, if it's a two year master's, let's say, we have a summer English, academic English program for researchers. So if you want to specifically improve your English language skills in terms of academic and article writing or for teaching in English, then we offer this three week program, which starts in July. Uh, that one is not free. It does have a, a tuition fee that it's approximately $950. Um, and the fee includes accommodation. Of course, for this year, that uh, we're still waiting for news from the Turkish government in terms of how or if we will be able to offer activities on campus. If the answer is no, then of course, this will all be delivered on an online format, but just in case that you know that we have this, this program. Okay, so now to conclude today's uh, presentation, here are the contact details of the Graduate School of Sciences and Engineering. You see the email address, website, and telephone number. That's a picture of our, of our uh, engineering faculty building or college building there. And um, the main thing is to make sure that you check the website before you email because most of the answers to the questions that you have will be there somewhere. So make sure that you check that uh, thoroughly. And for those of you who are international applicants uh, from outside of Turkey, then you can see our international admissions team contact details, uh, email, website, telephone. We're very active on social media as well. So you can, I invite you in particularly if you use Instagram to start following us at uh, KU International Admissions because we put a lot of information about our engineering sciences, students, faculty, deadlines, uh, new programs. So it's a nice way of keeping kind of abreast of any updates that we have in our graduate school of sciences and engineering.